Hi, I'm Taylor and I'm a second year MPH student from Columbia. Um, if you didn't see, last week I made a video debunking and uh, kind of ranting about some of the most common misconceptions I hear about research in general. But one of the other common things I get asked is how to get involved in research and sort of how to find a project if that is something that you're interested in. So this week I come to you from Tim's apartment and um, that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's get started. So I want to start by saying and kind of prefacing this with the fact that I can only speak from my experience and what worked for me may not work for other people. Um, I have been involved in research in two different um, like academic settings, one a very large public institution and one a, um, you know, at Columbia's Public Health School, obviously a smaller private institution. Um, so. I can only speak from my own experience. Other people um, may say that other things work for them. And if you have a go-to strategy for getting involved in research, feel free to leave a comment down below and let everybody else know. Um, I'd like to hear it too. So um, to get started, basically in my experience, the best way to sort of find a faculty member, find a project is to look at what the faculty that you're already involved with somehow, whether you are taking their class, whether they were assigned to you in some sort of mentorship capacity, whether even if you just went to an event that they were speaking at, um, to kind of start there. Because if you kind of think about it, you know, which way is more likely to like result in like making new friends? You know, do you just like go up to somebody randomly and be like, hey, want to be friends? Like, no, that doesn't really work. <laughs> What does work is, you know, using mutual connections and talking about something that you have in common. And then from there, you know, something grows out of it. And I feel like it kind of works similarly in like a mentorship, mentee, research, PI, researcher type capacity. So the first project that I was involved in, I was in my, um, I was in a class that was taught by this faculty member. Um, he had also been in an advisor capacity for an honor society that I was involved in on campus and I had gone to his office to talk to him about something completely different. Um, I was talking to him about a different sort of like non-research related project that I was working with um, on campus and it just so happened like that meeting I met with him and um, talked to him about you know my interests and his research and his interests and sort of, you know, what advice he had for me on this other thing I was working on. And he asked me if I would be interested in joining his research team. Um, and I, that's not an uncommon story. Like I've heard a lot of other students um, finding research and faculty members the same way. Um, and I think that why that works is when you're coming at somebody, like especially like a faculty member and you're like, hey, I wanna do research with you, I wanna do research with you, I wanna do research with you. They get so many asks, especially at larger schools, for people to do research with them and they ignore those emails. They ignore the emails that are just like, hey, can I do research for you? Like, and that's it, that's all you're talking to them about. Um, typically, um, I've found. <laughs> so I had kind of given up on the idea of doing research when I finally, when I met with this faculty member, I had like cold emailed a lot of different faculty members and like wet labs and things to try to do research and um, had never heard a single word back because they just get so many of those emails. And if you're not sort of showing that you have other interests as well um and that you're not just like trying to check a box that you actually have interest in the research and can add to their project somehow i think they're less likely to sort of take you on um a similar thing happened at columbia um i definitely was coming at it a little bit more from a i would like to work with you standpoint but i had gone to an event and this faculty member was speaking at the event and afterwards i just emailed her and was like hey um you know we briefly spoke about this at this event i was wondering if we could meet up to talk further about this thing that we are both interested in together and then of course from that meeting she was like well actually i'm starting a project on something similar and you know would you like to be involved etc so i have always found that it works better if you kind of play the game a little, um, not in a bad way, but so that they're asking you to be involved instead of you asking them. Um, 
I've just, I think that that obviously is a lot more successful and sometimes people just don't have room. Um, now the third sort of project that I've been involved in worked a little bit differently because there was an actual like call out for applications for a research intern. And so I applied to that and obviously that scenario is completely different. Um, if you see opportunities like those that you'd be interested in, I would just apply, 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 even like don't put too much stress into it. If you're like, oh, this is due, you know, in like two days and however am I gonna, you know, get everything together and like whatever, unless it's asking for a lot from you, if it's just asking for your like a resume and a cover letter, like just send it. What's the worst thing that happens? Even if you look at it and you think you're not qualified, just send it. What's the worst thing that happens? You know, you take a couple minutes, writing, you know, editing your standard cover letter to send out, you send out your, you know, somewhat standard like resume copy version and like you hear back or you don't, you know? So, um, I would just, my philosophy on that is to just always send out whenever you can. Um, so as far as kind of cold emailing professors, like I said, I definitely think that you should be able to pull some type of relationship, even if it's a stretch. Like, oh, I was talking to, you know, other professor who, you know, said that you did this type of research and, um, or, you know, like said that you were interested in X thing. I am also interested in X thing because of reasons. Um, so I kind of have like a standard like email template um, that I send out that includes, you know, what your connection is to them so that they know like right off the bat who you are because they get a lot of emails from a lot of students. Um, make sure that you're noting the interest and briefly explaining why you're interested in that and why you have some type of qualification to work on it. It doesn't have to be significant. It doesn't have to be super concrete. Just sort of, um, you know, the menstrual equity research I did, I started a task force um, related to menstrual equity um, in a different position that I held. And even though it was like, that worked out to be very close to something that she was working on. Um, you know, it's just kind of like making sure that you are noting somehow how you're like related to this research. Um, and then I would not blatantly um, mention that you're interested in research unless you know that they're actively searching for people. Um, I would just personally, what I have done is um, set up, like just, you know, set up a meeting to talk about the research. Um, they pretty much know what that means. Like it's code. Like when you send out an email like that, they know that you want to be involved, um, but you're not like flat out asking, um, which, you know, can work and has worked for me, but it can also backfire. So like I said, this is only from my personal experience. And then, um, you know, email etiquette is just to make sure that you're listing a bunch of times that you're available, that they can pick from, making sure that you're doing as much of the work as possible. And so they just have to pick a time that you've listed and send that back. They don't have to look through their calendar and find a list of times that might work for you and this and that, and like email tag back and forth of like, well, would Monday work? No, but what about Tuesday? Oh, what about next week? I'm actually out of town, I'm at a meeting, like blah, blah, blah. Like, you want to try to eliminate that as much as possible and as put as much of that burden on yourself because you're the one who wants something from them. Um, if you want, you can also attach your resume. Um, that's a little bit more forward, um, but I'm going to reiterate something that I said in my last video about how you definitely just want to make sure that you're doing something that you're passionate about um, and that'll come through in any situation. Um, people's passions about things always um, I think shine through, um, whether that is in an in-person meeting, whether that's in an email, whether that's in a personal statement, whether that is wherever. So, um, you know, find someone who's doing something you're passionate about. Look at the people closest to you. They might be doing something a little bit more in your ballpark than you think. And, um, yeah, good luck. Um, let me know if you have any questions um, about how I found my research or um, extracurriculars in general. Um, let me know. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Message me on Instagram, whatever you feel like. Um, 
if you like videos like this, um, I can get off the research bandwagon and the research train and um, sort of talk about some other things. So if you'd like to see that, leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see that when they get posted and I will see you next time.